What's up, everyone? David Sevens Guys here. We're casting from the Rospective studio. It's not a mansion. It's not. I'm um, somewhere else. I'm with my best friend. Um, he created an amazing setup to do this video, so I'm actually really excited. Uh, this video is also being streamed live on Instagram right now. So uh, for those who are watching it live, hi, everyone. And uh, for those who are watching it on YouTube later, hi, everyone. Um, okay, so what is this video about? This video is about how to learn um, to design sounds and how to learn, um, there's a dog behind me, <laughs> and how to learn to sort of program synthesizers. Um, a lot of synthesizer are sort of structured the same way. Uh, there are several um, elements um, that are uh, always the same when it comes to, uh, to synthesizer. Uh, we have oscillators, we have filters, we have um, envelopes and we have LFOs. Not all the synthesizers have LFOs or, or envelopes, but for the most part, Subtractive Synthesis works with an uh, oscillator and a filter. Now, uh, I got, like three hours ago, I got this uh, synthesizer, which is called uh, Roland JP08. This is a modern version of a really old synthesizer called uh, Roland Jupiter 8. And I really don't have any experience with this, with this synthesizer. I, I've always been a fan of what this is because uh, it's a very historical uh, synthesizer, but I never really used it. I used, it, I used the Arturia version, um, but uh, I don't know. It was I never really used it. it. It was a tiny interface, so I always just browse through presets. So once again, I have no idea how this synthesizer works. Um, so I thought it was a really cool idea to show you guys how I approach learning a new synthesizer, and uh, you know, kind of like what what I look for, and and then after I find everything that I need, uh, how I dissect uh, the way it works, and how I start designing my own sound. So, without any further ado, let's get to this little baby. All right, so as you can see, um, we have pretty typical layout of a synthesizer. Now here we have LFO, and here is the modulation. Now VCO stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator, which is our oscillators. Uh, they are called VCOs when we are on analog synthesizers, but for example, on new synthesizer, you don't really have VCOs, you just have oscillators because they're digital and they're not voltage control. So this is not particularly important, or I mean, this is something that you might not find on some synthesizer or on some synthesizer, it might be somewhere else. Um, however, VCO1 and VCO2, once again, VCO2 is optional, but for the most part, VCO1, you always have. Uh, in a synthesizer, because that's what generates our sound. After you go from VCO1 uh, to VCO2, if you have the option uh, of, of uh, VCO2, uh, you go inside a filter, which is over here. So first thing that you have to always sort of keep in mind, when you read a synthesizer, you read it this way. And then when you go on a different line, you read it this way. So the signal flow is, Oscillator goes to oscillator to, I mean, it doesn't go, it's, it's parallel. And they go inside filter and filter goes inside the envelope, um, which is envelope two is amp, I think. Yes, and envelope one is control, uh, controls the filter. The uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the sound and I'm gonna try and go to a flat in it single so sound. So let's hear how it sounds. You have this really ugly sound and uh, right off the bat, you see over here there's VCO1 and VCO2 and this is a mix. So if I turn this knob all the way to the left, I don't hear the other uh, oscillator. While if I turn it all the way to the right, I hear this terrible, um, sound, which is oscillator two. For the most part, it seems that the filter is open. This is our cutoff. And one thing that's been super annoying right now is the release. It's the fact that 
when I release my note, the sound is still going and it's super annoying. And that I know it's given by the release, which is this one over here. And so if I take it all the way down, you can hear that now the, so uh, the, the sound stops as soon as I release my uh, note. We got that out of the way. Now let's put envelope two all the way up as well so that we're sure that the filter is not being affected by anything. Uh, also in this particular synthesizer, we have two filters. There's one which is a VCF, which stands for voltage controlled filter. Again, this is sort of analog, uh, a, a recreation of an analog synthesizer. So everything was voltage controlled, but this is our cutoff. This is a resonance. Also, we can decide if it's uh, a minus uh, 12 dB slope, so it's a little bit um, more gentle, or a minus 24, so it's a little bit more steep. Then we also have a high pass filter, which is over here. And the high pass filter cannot be controlled with anything. It just It's just a high pass filter. You can hear it probably a little bit better on the lows. Cool, so uh, you can hear that basically we sort of adjusted the sound already. It was bending and now it's not bending anymore. And I'm pretty sure it was given by, should be envelope modulator. Yes, it was. And envelope modulator was probably controlled by envelope one. So. Uh, if I am doing this, it should probably do a pitchy sound. Exactly. Now, how do you know that envelope modulator is controlled by envelope one? Uh, to be honest, I uh, sort of guessed it. Uh, for the most part, when you're working with a synthesizer, what you get is uh, the envelope that controls the amplitude normally only controls the amplitude. Unless, like Serum, you can uh, sort of assign it to whatever you want, but in analog synthesizer and synthesizer where you can't really assign stuff, for the most part, the amp envelope only controls the amp envelope. Uh, the envelope one, which is the filter envelope, uh, normally will have, um, will allow you to control uh, pitch or filter or anything. So right now, uh, with this envelope mod over here, I control the amount that this envelope controlled the pitch of the sound. So if I put it all the way down, nothing is happening. If I put it all the way up, you get this pitchy sound. How fast do you want the pitchy sound to be and what kind of uh, path uh, should do it's decided by this. So if I do this and this, what you're gonna hear is you're gonna, since this is a slow attack, you're gonna hear the sound that pitches up slowly. It will reach this point and then it will drop to the sustain level. So it will do a wow kind of sound. There you go. If I take this all the way down, the reason is there's basically no time, no delay between this, this amount and this amount. So you are gonna just start straight from the maximum point, which is this one. Well, again, if I do this, this means that from the moment I heat my key to the maximum point, there's gonna be this amount of time. So these are time values, while this one, it's normally a level value. And so is re release is also kind of level time value, but let's forget about release for this one. If we play our sound now, uh, let's put the envelope modulation all the way down. If we play our sound now, it should technically be a straight sound. but it's playing a chord and uh, we kind of don't like that. So let's figure out what's going on. This 
uh, levels here, you see 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2 control the tone of our oscillator. So let's focus on oscillator 1 for now, VCO1. Uh, every time I talk about oscillator, once again, I'm talking about VCO1. So if I take it all the way down, you, we, were, we will have a very low tone. And then 32 is going to be an octave higher. And then 16, an octave higher. And so on. What's happening with VCO2 is that, well, you can't really see it here, but these levels are sort of hardwired. So you can only go from 40, uh, 64 to 32 to 16 to 8 to 4 to 2, right? Uh, well, with this one, you can do a sweep. So basically, you're not only getting the octaves, you're getting all the notes in between. Again, I don't know this synthesizer, but that's what I suppose, especially because by touching it, here it clicks, and here it's a smooth... Uh, sort of um, sweeping. So let me try. So I put the source mix to all the way to the lot to the right so I can hear only oscillator 2 And exactly you can hear that it's sweeping between the notes. So when I was listening to both oscillators at the same time I was getting this two different tones and the reason is it wasn't probably um, it was probably set to of whatever key right so now all I have to do is play the note and find the right uh, note all right there you go they are now the same note so again this is oscillator 2 this is oscillator 1 but we're playing a C. Now, very important thing, probably the most important thing of a synthesizer, beside the oscillator itself, is the wave shape. Now, as you can see over here, we have our oscillator with a bunch of waves. We have the sine wave. Now, once again, I'm playing only VCO1 just to explain this. We have sine wave, and then we have a triangle, then we have a saw, now we have a square, sorry, uh, this is a pulse, which is a square that can be uh, modulated to sort of becoming thinner or wider. And then we have an actual square, which sounds the same. The, there is a way to modulate it. I'll figure it out in a second. And then all the way here we have, I suppose it's white noise. It looks like it could be white noise. And it is. So let's put our synthesizer to saw wave, our oscillator one, and let's go back to oscillator two, which is, once again, you can see over here, it's a sine wave. So let's just put it to a saw wave. I'm gonna do saw on both oscillator one and oscillator two. Also, all right, once again, I didn't read. Uh, it's also very hard to see from uh, this angle, but basically now you can see over here, and this is like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Um, you kind of learn as, you, as you're going with it. This is, like I said, it's totally improvised. I, I haven't prepared anything. Um, you can see that here it says low frequency, and you can see that low frequency um, is selected or, or or this line this circle line over here touches uh the sine wave the saw and the square so this means that all these last three um waves are going to be very very low in uh tone so in oscillator two we're only getting actually three different um waves that we can use at the same note range as the VCO one. So now that I moved stuff around, I need to uh, go back and tune it again. All right, so again, let's play a C. We can detune oscillator two. And how do we do that? We have a tune over here. So this is a fine tune 
which means we can go, I think, 50 cents, not the wrapper, just 50 cents. It's actually half a semitone up and half a semitone down. And this way, we have our classic detune sound. Now, I can hear that as I keep my... Uh, Press my note, something happened uh, for some reason. Uh, I heard some pitching and uh, again, it's not the envelope because the envelope is all the way down. So what is it? Let's figure it out. I pretty, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but it's probably the LFO. So if I, now the LFO rate is really low. So if I take it all the way up, and I take the delay time because I feel like the delay time being so high up is probably what made me, what didn't make me realize that there was an LFO uh, affecting the sound. So let's take the delay time all the way down and let's take the rate up a little bit to see if something is affecting something else. And it is, it's, it's affecting uh, VCO2. So as you can hear, there's an LFO that's affecting VCO2. How do we turn it off? I am pretty sure that this is what's going on. If it's LFO modulation and this is again the amount. So if I take this all the way down, we should get rid of that. There you go. Now, you might ask, how uh, in the world did I know that LFO uh, 1 was affecting LFO 2? Once again, all I did was simply try to figure it out. I panned this left and right until I found what was the problem. Um, there's a very important thing that you have to um, understand about modulation and about LFO and about envelope. Because uh, that's very basic stuff, but people often get confused. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to explain what an LFO does, and then I'm going to explain what a modulation does. So if I increase the LFO again, you can hear that the LFO uh, basically affects the sound constantly. As I keep my note pressed, You'll hear that the LFO keeps going boo 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 boo. So it's kind of, you know, it, it will just keep going until I let my note go. The envelope doesn't do that at all. The envelope affects the sound only once. So this is the most important thing you have uh, to keep in mind. LFO affects the sound constantly as you hold the note. Envelope only affects it once. Let me prove this to you. So let's take the amount all the way up again and let's uh, do this trick with the envelope again. So it should do the pew sound again. As you can hear, no matter how long I keep holding the note over here, you can only hear this pew sound once. Let me do it very fast. Right? So if I want to recreate something fairly similar with an LFO, uh, I'm going to have to switch this to uh, a saw wave. I'm going to explain waves on LFOs as well. But basically, we're going to have a very similar sound, um, very similar effect where you have this like pitchy sound. It goes pew, pew. But again, since this is done with an LFO, you're going to hear the same effect repeated until I release my note. So here we go. Super simple. This is. You know, this is one thing that scares people off. LFO and envelopes, everybody is always confused. It's, it's actually a very simple thing. Um, as you can see, as you can hear, LFO 
just think about a, kind of like a looped envelope. That's what an LFO kind of is. It's, it's not, but just to make things a little uh, easier to understand. LFO, it's like a, a looped envelope um, and just envelope alone only occurs one. This is it. Now, um, let me explain a couple more things about uh, the LFO. So you remember here that based on this value in the envelope, uh, the sweep sound was either super fast or super slow. How do you do that with an LFO? Well, you do that with the rate. So if the rate is all the way down, we're gonna have a very slow um, LFO effect. So it's gonna do pew, 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 kind of. There you go. So if I increase the rate, you'll hear that it gets way faster. So this is how you control uh, an LFO. Now, uh, why was I not hearing the LFO at the beginning? It's because it was this delay time. And this delay time basically does exactly what it says. It delays the LFO. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you a couple cool effects. I'm pretty sure you guys heard this sort of effect before. So if I, uh, now I moved the LFO from a saw wave to a triangle. So it's gonna, actually I'm gonna move it to uh, a sine wave. So the effect we're gonna hear is exactly like the shape. So just try to picture the shape of, uh, of the wave and what you're gonna get is pretty much the same thing. With a saw wave, you get this high peak that drops down to a lower peak and then super fast goes back to a high peak and then drops down again. With, um, with a sine wave, what you're gonna get is a very smooth up and down and up and down and up and down. With the square, what you're gonna get is a straight, um, is a straight value that drops to a straight. Sorry, it's a straight high value that drops to a straight low value, um, and it never really sweeps down. It just goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It works in steps. So if I uh, play a sine wave, um, if I assign an LFO to uh, to the sine wave. Uh, we're gonna hear a, a much smoother sort of uh, effect. Right, it's very different from this. This sounds like a, a laser and this sounds like a siren. All right, so there's this uh, sort of very famous effect. If I do it on, let's make a somehow pretty sound. Never mind. <laughs> All right, for, for the time being, uh, let's just do it on this. All right, so what's happening now is the LFO hits our, modulates our oscillator right away, and it's not particularly pleasant. Now, if we increase the delay time, what we're gonna have is a straight sound that is not affected by the LFO, and based on the delay time, uh, we're gonna have the um, LFO kicking in, so let's try. You can hear? So it's, it's straight up at the beginning and then uh, the delay time slowly kicks in the uh, LFO. Now, uh, remember when I told you I wanted to do a pretty sound and it wasn't pretty at all? What was going on is that uh, you basically get this effect. So you have 
oscillator 2 that was modulated by the LFO, like this, but oscillator 1 wasn't. So what you get is a terrible sound that's basically a combination of uh, one modulated sound and one straight sound. And it sounds terrible and it's something that you probably never want to hear ever again, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Right, so how do we tell the synthesizer that we want the LFO to also modulate envelope, um, oscillator one? Well, if you see over here, voltage control um, oscillator modulator, we can decide what's being affected. And now there's a little knob over here. Um, and right now is all the way, it's not, it's not a knob, sorry, it's a button. And right now is all the way to the end. And if you see the path over here, it says it's VCO2. If I put it in the middle, you can see it goes from here to VCO1 plus VCO2. So right now, if I set it there, it's probably gonna modulate VCO1 and, also, and VCO2. And let's try. This is VCO1, because I'm all the way to the left. Let's try all the way to the right, to VCO2. Yes, so basically, now if I'm in the middle, we're gonna hear both oscillators. And they're both being modulated by the LFO. Uh, if I wanted to only modulate uh, VCO1 or oscillator 1, all I have to do is put this little button all the way up and you hear now I'm all the way to the right. So oscillator two, it's gonna be straight. It's not gonna be modulated. And if I put it all the way to the left, oscillator one, it's now be modulated. Pretty sure this works the same way with uh, the envelope. Cause this is, as you can see here, uh, the sort of area it includes both the LFO and envelope. So this means that this selector over here works for both VCO1 and VCO2 and LFO and envelope. Uh, now, let's just make sure. So let's take the LFO all the way down. Once again, we're gonna have a straight sound. If we put the envelope all the way up, it's gonna be super annoying, but I want to make sure that now the envelope is only controlling VCO or oscillator one. And it is, let's twist the mix all the way to the right to make sure that oscillator two is not being um, affected. And it's not. If I want to modulate both, once again, I go in the middle with the button and with the switch, whatever. And now I'm affecting both oscillator one and oscillator two, and let's try. As you can hear, I'm actually modulating both. What else do we have to figure out? I haven't really focused too much on uh, the amp envelope. Now there's a bunch of stuff over here that I'm not really gonna go and explain, um, like all these buttons and stuff. This is, uh, these buttons, are a very uh, Jupiter 8 kind of thing. And this is not what this video is about. This video is about how to uh, understand the signal path and the workflow behind every synthesizer. Um, so the moment you get a new synthesizer, how do you get familiar with it? How you, do you get familiar with uh, where the oscillators are? What do they do? Uh, how does the filter work? How do you affect the sound with um, envelopes and LFOs and all that kind of stuff? Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with this. For the most part, this just select the preset, but then you can add unison and polyphony and all that kind of stuff. We're not gonna we're not gonna do that. We're also not gonna necessarily look at the uh, sync because this is something that you don't find on every synthesizer. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna focus right now on the envelope. Now, amp envelope, it's very straightforward. 
works like any other envelope. Um, but in this case, instead of working on uh, pitch or filter, works on the amplitude. So basically what we have here is if we set the attack to slow, uh, what we're going to have is a very soft start of the uh, of our note. So let's try. Well, if I take it all the way down, you hear that the note starts right away. If I take it all the way up. Right, very simple. Release is basically the amount of sound that passes through after I let go of my notes. So if I take it all the way down, as soon as I release the note, uh, you'll hear that the sound stops. Let me take it all the way back. Right. If I increase the release, you'll hear that after I release my note, you'll hear that the sound goes on for a little bit and then it fades away. Right. So. This is very useful. This kind of setup is very useful when uh, you do pads. Pads are normally very smooth and sort of lush sounds. Uh, and what the typical sound of a pad is usually a fairly slow attack and a fairly slow release. So everything just sort of sounds smoother. So you kind of get this sound. right as opposed to once again this is not really something that you would find um, on many synthesizer this is a negative value uh, so basically uh, if you switch it down it will make your um, envelope negative but again I'm not going to really focus on this because um, this is typical of this particular synthesizer and once again we're only focusing on how to learn um, the basics. Now, cutoff, that's probably the most important part. Now, let's make sure that our sound is a straight line. By the way, now we got to basically the init preset, right? So now we have to detune. So we got our init preset, and now let's start messing with the filter a little bit. Now the filter, as you know, or as you should know, basically filters out uh, certain frequencies, especially if we have a low pass. This is a low pass, so this will basically cut all the high frequencies. Well, this, it's a high pass filter and will cut all the low, low frequencies. Right. What does the resonance do? The resonance basically creates a little bump on the cut of the filter and basically increases the volume of the frequencies that are right before the cut of this cutoff. So uh, when you move it and you have a resonance up a little bit, you're going to hear this sweepy sound. <laughs> Right, so the higher the frequency, uh, sorry, the higher the resonance, the more sweepy the sound is. It's also kind of very dangerous to have uh, resonance all the way up because uh, they can really break your speakers. There's another cool thing that we can do. Uh, as you can see here, voltage control filter, you see LFO modulation and envelope modulation. This means that we can control the um, filter with either our LFO or our envelope. How do we do that? Once again, with this amount. So these two things, sorry, these four things, uh, always control uh, the amount that the modulator is affecting the parameter. So. Uh, since these two things right now are all the way down, 
the LFO and the envelope are not doing anything to our filter. So if I take all the, my filter all the way down, you can hear that nothing is really happening. All right, so if I, for example, take the LFO modulation all the way up, you're gonna hear that the filter starts opening and closing my cutoff once again, based on the shape that I decided and the rate that I decided. So we're gonna have a, I'm actually gonna increase the resonance a little bit so you can hear it a little bit better. I take it all the way down once again and you can hear the filter modulating the thing as I increase it so you can really start hearing and picturing what's really going on. The same way I can do with an envelope and this is possibly the most famous thing that you can do with a synthesizer especially when it comes to making little plucky sounds. If I increase the modulation and I put it all the way up, what I have is now I'm affecting the filter with the modulation. So right now the attack is all the way down. So it's going to be super quick and it's going to reach the um, decay point, decay maximum point very fast because the attack is all the way down. And then it's going to drop to the sustain level fairly fast because it's all uh, it's halfway through and then it's just gonna stay closed right so right so if I want to make it even faster and I can close the cutoff as well I can close it even more and you can hear it even more There you go. Uh, if I want to have a swipe in, I can lower the, uh, sorry, I can increase the attack and the filter is gonna ease in, go to the maximum point on the decay and then go all the way down. And this is what, you know, Don Diablo and uh, all those, um, Future house people do a lot, so you get this. You know, it's kind of, you also need to try and find the balance between, um, you know, how fast you want this thing to hit and stuff. Yeah, that's. Fairly simple. Uh, cool, now like this is just gonna stay up. One, um, I haven't really focused much on the sustain level. Basically the sustain level is where you want your modulation to stop. So right now, let's look at how things are sort of laid out. You have a filter that is pretty much closed, right? And the envelope modulator is all the way up. So what's gonna happen is uh, you are gonna have this uh, filter go fully open at this point, right? And then it's gonna drop uh, fairly fast. Actually, let's make it fairly fast. This is very fast. It's gonna go and close and be fully closed because the sustain level is all the way down. You can hear the filter opens. Let's make it a little bit more obvious. The filter opens. And then it closes. If I was to increase the sustain level, what's gonna happen is the filter is gonna go to this point and then it's gonna drop to whatever point I put it. So you can hear that here is almost open. Obviously it's not because the cutoff is still trying to take it down. Yeah. 
but basically this sets where your filter stops at uh, the same the same way works with the pitch uh, I just didn't explain it to you guys but um, basically yes this tells the synthesizer where this envelope is gonna stop your level whether it's the filter or whatever whether is the um, the pitch uh, let's sort of reset everything now there's this thing which is called key follow the key follow is something that uh, basically opens and closes the filter based on which note you're playing why is that uh, sometimes you know if you're playing a bass the bass has a lot of bass but not a lot of high frequencies so the filter affects uh, high frequencies in a different way based on which note you're actually playing so obviously this note is going to be sorry a higher note is going to be sort of perceived in a way like like it's way darker because the cutoff is basically cutting more frequencies compared to a lower note uh, well with the key follow you can basically tell the filter to open or closed based on the position of your um, of the note you're playing so for example listen to this note you can hear that it's opening a little bit maybe you can hear that as I move it up it opens the filter a little bit um, well with a lower note you probably wouldn't notice it too much with a lower note it's actually closing it even more um, because it probably goes negative so I think this is like the zero level and here it opens the note and here it closes it or sorry yeah something like that let me try again yeah here it opens it and here it closes even more this level over here I'm not entirely sure what it is uh, VCA level okay um, right again this shows how important it is to read things VCA this is just the level um, basically uh, it just it's just volume VCA stands for voltage controlled amplified so it's nothing but um, but basically a volume control now I'm not entirely sure what this uh, LFO mod does because I can see zero one two three and uh, we only have one LFO so I am pretty sure this just oh, okay I get it I get it I get it I get it um, once again you just have to read um, I keep reminding myself that uh, you can see here this area is dedicated to the VCA this basically um, allows you to create this wobbly sound um, that affects the amplitude of the sound so it's basically like if you would go like this uh, with an LFO and this is nothing but the amount so this is basically the same thing that you have uh, here sorry with this LFO mod and here with this LFO mod but instead of being um, a fader it's just this little um, button slider knobby thingy I don't know how to do that how to say that uh, cool now basically we learn how to use the synthesizer this is literally just it now there's this sync function the sync function I know exactly what it does I have no idea how to explain it but basically it syncs the frequency of LFO of sorry of uh, oscillator uh, 2 to oscillator 1 and just make this like kind of FME slash metallic -y sound so if I turn it on you hear that the sound uh, has a high frequency but also a lower harmonic to it which is uh, dictated by uh, VCO1 and so if I lower VCO1 to 64 you hear actually let me just play and do it uh, 
it sounds really cool. There's um, there's one thing that is very famous. Um, there's one effect that is very famous with the sync. And what you do is basically, I think, modulate VCO2 and you get this very Daft Punk sound. Uh, I'm just going to do it. So the sync has to be on. We put envelope all the way up. Actually, let me turn it off. So I want to hear what it does first. So if I turn sync on, oh, actually it was also doing it with both. Right, so. You probably heard it in some French house um, tunes. I mean, it's it's very it's very famous, and uh, you do that by syncing oscillator two to oscillator one, and then you modulate oscillator two with an envelope, and you get this bow bow sound. Uh, now let's turn it off, and uh, I want to focus on one last thing: the pulse with modulation. Now, um, I think I have to set the oscillator one to. Uh, to pulse width, not uh, not square pulse width, which is this one, and um, there you go. So I was saying before that uh, this particular wave basically is nothing but a square that you can sort of stretch, and as you stretch it, it sounds sort of thinner and thinner. So this is our normal square wave, and you can probably hear that it's exactly the same as this square. But with this particular one, you can control the pulse width. And when you control the pulse width, what you get is this thinner sound. The cool thing that you can do is you can control this pulse width with an LFO. So right now is on M, which I suppose stands for mute. Not entirely sure. But if I put it into um, LFO, it kind of sounds like a detune, but it's not a detune. Uh, this is a very, very famous type of uh, sound, especially from the um, from the Roland family. Uh, and uh, it creates some really nice smooth pads. So if you do something like this. It sounds like it sounds like it's detuned, but it's not. I'm only using um, oscillator one. And if I put a filter and a little bit of resonance, what I can also do is I can increase the envelope and increase the attack on the filter. All right, guys, this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, Put a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you learned something new. And if you're on Instagram right now, uh, this is the last minute. So let me see those hearts if you like the video and if you learned something. It really means a lot. There you go. We got a lot, a lot of hearts on Instagram. I'm going to have fun with this little baby now because uh, I haven't really played with it. I just did this tutorial and that's as much as I played. Cool, guys. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe. And for me, David, Simmons, guys, see you next time. Bye. Where is it? Here.